to get up there, Pat. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, it's an honor to be here with all of you today, and I am so excited to be celebrating 20 anniversary, the 20th anniversary of the Rainbow Coalition Cube. Um, it is not me, and I will get to that in slides. It is all of us together, working together, and I'm so proud of the work that we do, and I am so proud of the fact that um, I'm still here from before we started. It's 20 years, and to think of all the great things that we've accomplished together as a community. When we started back in 2000, the University of New Hampshire came to us with a grant because Raymond had higher rates of substance misuse compared to um, reported use among kids in the state of New Hampshire. I can tell you that in 2019, when we had our data, it was the first time that Raymond, New Hampshire had lower rates of substance misuse compared to the state of New Hampshire. That was huge. Along the way, we've done a lot of great things. We've empowered young people through our youth action groups. Um, one of our young people actually went and spoke to the President of the United States for parents things like here today, and that was quite an honor. I mean, to, to be, get that invitation and to have to identify a young person to bring with me, that was, that was a pretty special day. But that just speaks to the work that we do here in Raymond together. So when we first started, we were a grassroots coalition, and we still are. Um, didn't really know what that meant when I first got involved. I got involved because I was the parent of four young children in the Raymond School District. And when the university came to the community and explained to us what they wanted to do, that was something that was very concerning to me, and I wanted to be part of making a difference. So I got involved. Um, through the years, I've learned grassroots is very important because we're actually doing the work in our community that our community needs us to do. It's not somebody who's coming with a pocket of money and saying, here, we think you have a problem, and you need to go fix that. Um, we actually, uh, oops, sorry, <laughs> identify the problem in our community and work together to, um, to work on that. So. I always print my slides and then I always forget to flip through them. So, <laughs> um, this here, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Definitely speaks to the work that we do. And um, my dear friend, Ann Douglas, is here in the room today. And she's been with us for a long part of this journey. When the coalition first started, we unfortunately lost two young people to suicide. And NAMI New Hampshire reached out to us and asked us if we would partner with them on a new program, the Connect Suicide Prevention Program. And we were excited to do that. And I was ready to run down the road. And Ann actually gave me a little Porsche car that I still have on my desk today. And she taught me that you can't just run and do something. You really need to engage the people in the process. And you need to stop and meet people where they're at and get them involved. And and it's very dear to me, so thank you. <laughs> um, but that, this is what the coalition does, right? We can go checking boxes and we can get things done to satisfy a grant, but we really want to make a difference. We really want that work to count. And as I look around the room, I see people that we've worked with for many, many years. Eddie Edwards was a huge part of the work that we started doing when he was with New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement, and we just had a conversation about that. Um, but this is what the coalition is, a grassroots coalition. And when we think about prevention, if you think about when the coalition started and where we are today, just with a show of hands, how many in the room, this is your first prevention coalition that you've been at? I think there's more of you, actually. <laughs> when I was doing the seating chart, there were like a lot of new people. <laughs> and I apologize if you don't like your seat. It's not easy seating 140 people. <laughs> But a lot of people have come to the table over the years. I think 20 years, a student could have been born in the Raymond community, gone through the whole school system, graduated, and been on their own right now. So that's a long time, and that's a lot of people who are impacting. It's a lot of people to engage and educate about why the coalition is so important also. So we're here today because we empower the community to promote positive youth development and reduce youth suicide and youth substance use and suicide risk. That's what brings us into the room. What is a coalition? And this has come up a lot in my friend Carlton Hall. I stole this resource from his website, <laughs> who is our speaker today. Um, this is really important to understand. A coalition is a formal arrangement for cooperation and collaboration between groups or sectors of the community in which each group retains its identity 
but all agree to work together towards a common goal of building a safe and healthy community. That means all of you are part of the work that we do. The coalition is not Celeste Clark. I am not the coalition. We are the coalition together. And that's hard for some people to understand. We work with law enforcement in the schools and our health care providers. And actually, that's my next slide. <laughs> I was paying attention. Um, in order to get a drug-free community grant, which we got in 2010, you have to show that you have collaboration amongst all of these partners, and they're all actively involved in your work, um, which we do. Obviously, we've had that since 2010. It was a requirement to even apply for grants. Um, and when you walked in, hopefully all of you got a dot, and you put it on the little map that's out in the hallway, so we're going to be able to see an exact replica of this as it stands for who's in the room today, which is exciting to see all of the people who are part of all that we do. Um, and I actually forgot to say when I started that I want to give a huge shout out to my staff, Pam Turcott and Pam Baker, who are amazing. <laughs> and I also want to thank all the young people who are here in the room. You're going to talk to me. <laughs>
We are a data-driven coalition. From the very beginning, as I mentioned, we started on the Youth First Behavior Survey, and we've collected that ever since. I shared some really good data with you at the beginning, which was exciting. But we had COVID, and COVID came into our world and it locked all of us upside down in many different ways. And we have our Youth First Behavior Survey back for Raymond High School, and I'm gonna share some of that data with you. And I, I correct myself, it's for the Raymond community because the schools are just where we take these surveys, but the representation that comes out of that survey data represents our community. And we do take survey data from our middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and our high school. Um, and we're very grateful to the school district for allowing us the ability to do that. So this is middle school data that I'm going to focus on first. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. 94% of them have not used any drug or alcohol in the past 30 days. And uh, when we had a meeting, I was asked to find something positive in the data, and that's what I found. <laughs> Because here's, and I want to say also, at our coalition meeting on November 10th, we're going to take a deep dive into this data. So if this fascinates you or interests you, please come to that meeting where we'll talk more about it. But you can see by looking at this chart, which has a lot going on, alcohol use amongst our students in the middle school has increased. Cigarette use has got, is at 1%. And we know that that's something that has been on our radar because people have been talking about the conversion from cigarettes to vaping but then we know vaping is going, what well, we've heard, vaping is going to turn into more cigarette use at some point, and, and that's reflected a little bit in this data. Um, vaping went up in our schools, and of the 3% of students who are vaping, 2% of them are vaping marijuana. So that's some, some very informative data that we were able to collect from our schools, um, something for us to be aware of. Suicide and self-injury rates at the middle school Students who seriously considered suicide in the past 12 months, 24% of the students in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade have seriously thought about this. And when we think about our kids feeling valued by the adults in the community, only 67% feel like they're valued. So we have a work to do as adults. We move on to Raymond High School. 82% of Raymond School high school students have not used drugs or alcohol in the past 30 days. I, I want to get excited about that, but I want to caution all of you not to get excited about that. Because I mentioned that COVID was happening. We were coming out of COVID. There were a lot of students who weren't even present in the classrooms to take this survey who are at highest risk and that we need to have services for. So while we look at the data, it's not really completely accurate only because of the students who aren't participating. So for past 30 day use, this chart looks awesome, right? I mean, the rates have come down so much, but again, the caution piece for alcohol use, marijuana. And again, we can see cigarette use went up in this category as well. And 18% of the students who took it reported vaping, and half of them, 9%, reported vaping marijuana. Something to be aware of. And this marijuana that they're vaping, the THC level in it is much higher than what you think of when you think of a typical joint or, or a leafy substance, marijuana. So important to note. Suicide risk at Raymond High School. Students who seriously considered suicide in the past 12 months, 20% of our students. Again, not a complete reflection of the students, but important data for us to be aware of and definitely something for us to be working with. 63% of our students at the high school feel like they matter to adults. We need these kids to know that we're here for them and that they matter and we care about them. And that's something that we definitely try to stress to our youth action kids and that they do a really good job of going back into their school community and working on. Talking about the dangers of drugs and alcohol, 38% of students report they have an adult who talks to them about this. John Delina from the DEA is with us today. He's going to tell us why that is so important to increase that number. The drugs that are on our streets right now are deadly. And we have 62% of students who don't have somebody talking to them about drugs and alcohol. It only takes one caring adult. This is our Peter Benson book. If you haven't got a copy of it, we can get you a copy. But it's a quick read and tells you about the value of every adult in our community and the difference that they can make. Every child needs at least one caring adult. And we talk about prevention. Prevention doesn't have to be difficult. We've said this before. It's increasing awareness decreasing access, and will decrease use. 
So let's talk about this. You all have a notepad in your folder. You can take that out, and you all have a pen, and you've got in your little gift bag, and we're going to do a little act, quick, quick, quick activity. Everything we hear in the news, on TV, on social media, is very confusing about what marijuana is today. Is it cannabis? Is it marijuana? Is it legal? Is it illegal? How many people are confused? <laughs> so if you just number one, two, and three on your pod, and then you can answer the following questions, yes, no, or you can put a question mark. Can we write because I'm going too fast? <laughs> So number one, is there medical marijuana in New Hampshire? Yes or no? And it is a bonus if you know what it's called. Number two, is marijuana decriminalized in New Hampshire? Yes or no, or question. And number three, is it legal in New Hampshire? Many, many people can't answer this, these questions. They're, Confused. We talk to adults and children alike, and they don't know because of all the messaging right here. So I actually don't have a prize. The prize is your gift bag already. But <laughs> <laughs> so number one, we do have therapeutic cannabis, which is the correct term in the state of New Hampshire for anybody with a qualified medical condition and a card from a doctor saying that they qualify for this. They can get it through the state. Number two, marijuana is decriminalized in the state of New Hampshire, which means if you're caught with a personal amount of marijuana, you would get a citation very similar to a parking ticket, which you could send in the mail and pay. Number three, marijuana is illegal in the state of New Hampshire. And we have some very strong young leaders who went to Concord this past spring and raised awareness and provided information to the state legislators. They were featured in the newspaper and we're extremely proud of them for the work that they did. So why is marijuana not good for New Hampshire? There's a lot of controversy about this. People are promised all kinds of things from the marijuana industry. Rockingham County is, already has a drug problem. We're classified on the high intensity drug trafficking area map. So we don't need to increase any more drug activity in this community. In the New, uh, New York Post this past weekend, thank you, John Molina, shared this article with me. The San Diego Emergency Room Department is averaging 37 people a day for issues dealing with marijuana, most of them involving psychosis. Our young people already have a problem with their mental health. They're already struggling. We should not be increasing access to this. We need to learn more about THC and what that means. And I circled the long-term harms psychosis, depression, anxiety, and suicide. These are already issues we should not be increasing access. The industry, the marijuana industry, promises us a lot of things, and there's supposed to be this big bucket of money that's gonna be coming. In Colorado, for every dollar in tax revenue from the sale of marijuana, it costs them $4.50, counteracting the legalization effects. Drug driving is now involved in one in four deaths in Colorado. I think our law enforcement, they have their hands full of people driving way too erratically in the state right now, so we can't afford to add more erratic drivers. And on top of our kids, not everyone's doing it. Not every state has legalized marijuana. 31 states have not. So we can't buy into the fact that, oh, New Hampshire's a holdout. 31 states are a holdout at this point. This was in the union leader last month on a Sunday. My husband hates when the union leader comes in. Or any newspaper, I start reading it. Ah! <laughs> it's like, come down. Um, a cannabis island. New Hampshire is a cannabis island. Don't we all want to live on an island? I know a few people who just visited an island and had a great time. <laughs> Let's keep New Hampshire an island. Uh, and this interesting quote is in there by a man that was interviewed who owns three marijuana businesses and was looking, waiting to come to New Hampshire. The cannabis industry tends to object to the term recreational, just like it tends to prefer the term cannabis to marijuana. So if we start changing our language to cannabis, we're doing exactly what they want us to do. And we can't collect information on the Youth First Behavior Survey that says, have they used cannabis? Have they used marijuana is the question. So that's the information.
information that we should be reporting on. So let's just keep off the grass in New Hampshire. <laughs> that we're facing, we have some work to do. You're all invited to come to our monthly coalition meetings. The next one, again, is on November 10th, 9 to 10.30 at the Raymond Baptist Church. You're all welcome. This week is Red Ribbon Week, and hopefully you have red ribbons on your table. But our young people and our school district and our community have completely bought into this. Um, we've done a great job having conversations right down to our preschool age group in the school. So it's very important to promote a happy, happy, healthy, drug-free life. In our medication take-back event, there's no rest for prevention people this month. <laughs> our prevention um, take-back event is on Saturday, tomorrow. I won't be sleeping late. <laughs> At Hannaford and Raymond, 10 to 2. Interesting fun fact. In Ravens alone, since 2010, we've collected more than 2,900 pounds of medication, equal to a small hippo, a female hippo. They're pretty heavy. <laughs> so that just speaks to the importance of people going into their medicine cabinets, having a conversation, and getting their medication safely disposed of. When Coalition started back in 2002, Friends, the sitcom, which many of you hopefully have seen, it was a very good show, um, was the top 10 sitcom at that time. Matthew Perry is featured on the, the cover of People Magazine this week. It was perfect timing. <laughs> and he's releasing a book talking about his struggles with addiction and how he, he's almost died several times. It's a very interesting story. But it's one that was very hard for him to share. But if you see his quote, it's a story that's difficult but filled with hope. And that's why he's sharing the message that people can recover and people can get well and they can be functioning. So that's really important. Our work is not funded by a pot of gold, per se. It's funded by grants and fundraisers. So <laughs> I would love a pot of gold. Um, our annual gala is going to be on March 11th. We would love for all of you to come. Justin McKinney is going to be joining us again, and he is hilarious. So I'm just putting that out there. Or if any of you like to do gala committee planning, we would love to have you on the committee too. And this is something that we're very proud of. This is definitely a community effort. Our Cam Bear Memorial Disc Golf Course that's located at Riverside Park in Raymond. This is an example that the coalition doesn't just deal with substance misuse and suicide risk and talk about those issues. We provide opportunities for our community to come out and have fun be with their family, enjoy activities outside. Um, this, this project was amazing. Several people in the room are part of it. The community really came together for this, and it's being widely used. So I, walk, I know other people walk around town and people say, oh, the disc golf park is great. I've only thrown one once with Pat last weekend. <laughs> Um, you have your notes, so you just wrote something. If you want to leave us a note, you want to tell us something, what went well, what didn't go well, something about the coalition, we would love to hear from you. You can leave all of your notes in the middle of the table. Data collection for all of your three questions. <laughs> and you're the ambassadors for the work that we do here at the coalition, and we're grateful to have you here. If you learn something new, take it back to the community, tell somebody if you can encourage them to get involved. The majority of people in this room didn't read a note somewhere and decide to come. The majority of the people in this room had someone say, do you know about the coalition? Would you like to learn more? And that's how people get involved. That's how that network grows. People learn about what we do. And if you're posting any pictures, don't forget to tag us, RCFY. Also in your folder is our annual yearbook. My husband pointed out there is a mistake, so I'll see how many, it's like a teacup or something you can find. There's a mistake in the book. <laughs> I love that man. <laughs> um, but the book is a compilation of all of the work that we've done over the past year and all of the people, again, who are part of the coalition. So I'm going to leave you with this. Hope. If you can carry one thing throughout your entire life, let it be hope. Let it be hope that better things are always ahead. Let it be hope that you can get through even the toughest of times. Let it be hope that you are stronger than any challenge that comes your way. Let it be hope that you are exactly where you are meant to be right now and that you are on the path to where you are meant to be because during these times, hope will be the very thing that carries you through.